in Southeast Sulawesi, Indonesia. I had heard about a gem of fascinating tales. The journey is far and it can be challenging, but it's worth it. In this video, I set out to explore all that this island has to offer. Here we will learn about the kingdom that became a sultanate. We will visit the Bhutanese tribes and learn about their ways of life. And we will feel the warm embrace of the Bhutanese people as they welcome us with open arms wherever we go. Baggy guys, yes, I'm back in Southeast Sulawesi here in the beautiful city of Gendari. I've had a fantastic stay with my family in Denmark, and now it is time for adventure once again. So, let me share the plan with you guys. For the last couple of days, I've been doing a ton of research about the next places I could visit after Gendari because coming back, I don't really feel like just exploring a big city, and when you're traveling, you gotta follow your heart. So, Tomorrow morning, we're going to take a ferry to Bhutan Island where we'll be staying in Bao Bao. But before we leave Kandari, a local friend of mine, he told me there's some traditional food here from Kandari that I have to taste before I leave. So now I'm gonna grab my things, we're gonna go on the road, and let's go and meet my friend Sam from Kandari. Let's go! So guys, we have now made it here to the restaurant and I've met Sam. Good to see you again, buddy. Nice to see you too, man. <laughs> and the reason why we're actually here is to try this. Sinongi. Sinongi. Yeah. You've tried it before, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You like it? That's my favorite. Man. That's your favorite? Yeah, that's why I came here, man. All right. Then no, let's go try way, it. Something Ma made in Kandari. Ah, so ole ole. Like ole, ole yeah. ah, you, right? I love it. Hey? I was here in Gennady. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, thank you so much, bro. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so actually, I haven't told Sam that I'm not the biggest fan of fish. But, you know, today we're trying something new. So I'm just letting him pick the ones that he knows is good. And then we're going to try it out. The restaurant we had picked is called Kendari Seafood. And it's one of the most famous seafood restaurants here in Kendari. Here you can pick whichever fish you like and you can watch them as they throw it on the grill. So guys, here I am with Benny. Yeah. Benny, or your real name is Samuel. Samuel. Yeah. But your friends call you Benny. Yeah. Benny. Benny's actually from here, yeah, but you here. live somewhere else. Yeah. Where do you live? United States of America. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> Basically, I told Benny, just order whatever you want, I'm paying today. And he was like, no, 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 no. Nah. You order whatever you want, and I'm paying today. I'm the one who's gonna pay. <laughs> Bro, your money doesn't work here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the famous one, the Sinongi. Sinongi. And this is made from sagu, yeah? Sagu, right. Ah, I so haven't... they pour the hot water, uh -huh. they mix it uh -huh. really hard, and then it's like glue. Yeah, it really is. Look at this. Stick, right? So we have uh, this one called sayur bening, and then kangkung. Yeah, and it's like beans with bean shrimp. Yeah, kakap mera. The red or snapper style, right, yeah. And then we have baronang. I don't even know that in English. Really? I, I need to. <laughs> they don't have it there, man. So, first, you have to get this one. Okay, start and with then, some Yeah, start with soup. And then, you get the sinongi. Right ah, okay, okay, okay. Spin it. Spin it, yeah. Oh, that's so small, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Right. Oh. All right. Okay. You uh -huh. can use your finger. I mean, like that's original. We're gonna try with the fingers. All right. So, so you yeah. just put right here. And yeah. Then, like you know, like scissor. Just get one and then that's it. So you don't need to, you know, <laughs> pinch it. Uh -huh. We make it into a small ball. Yeah, small ball yeah. And then 
Whoops. <laughs> Holy time, man. <laughs> yeah. This long, it's all in it. That is special. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't really taste like a lot. Yeah. It, it doesn't taste like anything, right? Yeah. The taste comes it's a bit from the water. Soup. Yeah. 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 I think I'll take some rice. You'll take some rice, okay. <laughs> Just give up. <coughs> In the kampung? The fish is good. Yeah. The flavor, right? What are we doing in kampung? You know, we use like oil like, like this, man. No? <laughs> Yeah. But then I cannot get close to my food. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm probably not the biggest fan, fan of that. I'm <laughs> sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. You're fine. But the fish was fantastic. And even I'm not a big fan of fish. So if you like fish, don't forget to visit Rumah Makan. Kendari. Seafood Kendari. Kendari. Huh? Yes. And bro, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome, bro. My pleasure. I thank would you. give you a high five, but it's covered in Zinongi, so I'll do this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, bro. Enjoy. Bro, you ended up paying anyway. Bro, your money doesn't... I told you, your money doesn't work here, man. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. All right, so I've come down to the harbor here in Kandari to ask the locals for some advice on how do I get to Bao Bao. And luckily, I came down here because actually, it was a little bit more difficult than I'd expected, but luckily there's a lot of people here willing to give me advice. Assalamu alaikum! <laughs> so I've had a lot of help. And a ton of selfies later. It was time to head back to the hotel and get ready for our departure the following morning. Selamat pagi guys! It is another beautiful morning in Indonesia. And today our adventure towards Pulau Buton starts. So I'm ready to leave Hotel Claro here in Canary. I've had a fantastic stay. Terima kasih banyak ya guys. Sampai bertemu lagi. And I have a great send off here from some of my subscribers as well. So let's hit the road. It's gonna be a hot and long day. I will tell you guys the program, but let's get on the road first because we are late. <laughs> See you guys. Ta da! Zero. Yeah, my god, zero. Bye. Alright, guys. We are now on the road, so let me share you the plan. Today, we are gonna ride first around two hours to a port called Amalengo something. And then we're gonna cross to Bhutan Island. And then we got 200 kilometers down through Bhutan Island to the capital, Bao Bao. So, yeah, it's now seven o'clock. My estimate is maybe we will arrive at six if we're a little lucky. So, uh, it's gonna be a good day. Let's go. Today, I just feel grateful for being able to ride on this KTM 790 Adventure Rally. It is such a lovely bike. I absolutely love Machan. So, today's shout out goes to. Hello! Hello, hello! Today's shout out goes to KTM Indonesia. Thank you guys. I then crossed the iconic 1.3 kilometer long Teluk Kendari Bridge. It was inaugurated by President Jokowi in 2020. And as I was running a bit late, I put Machan in fifth gear and headed for the port. Yes, we are almost there, guys. Just five more kilometers, and I think we're gonna make the ferry. We made it, guys, and we have 10 minutes left. So, pro tip, Amalengo port is not where it says on the on the Google Maps. All right, guys, I think we found it. I gotta hurry up and buy a ticket because if it departs at nine, that's in like five minutes. Yes, so we have plenty of time because there will be an hour before it departs and they haven't even opened the ticket office yet, so we have 
plenty of time. <laughs> but the time went by fast, as I first met a kind subscriber of mine, and several locals then showed up, who were very excited to meet an Indonesian-speaking foreigner. All right, guys. So we got the ticket, and it's actually only 120,000 for myself and for the big bike. So that's quite cheap. So in a second, we'll get to board the ship. Let's do it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Guys, let's go to Pulau Buton. There's always something special about putting Machan on a ship. Now the question is... Hello, how do we get in? Masuk! Makasih bro, see ya! I have made it upstairs and I'm not really sure if I'm allowed to be here. Actually, someone told me that I could go upstairs, but then I came into the bridge, which is where the captain sits, and then I went outside here right next to the bridge. There's no people here. But right now I'm kind of waiting to see if they will kick me out or if they will allow me to stay. The good thing about staying here is that I can see Machan. I have a good view, I have shadow and a little bit of peace because the last hour I've spoken with yeah, nearly a hundred people, so I'm a little bit tired. I need a mental break. So we can see Bhutan Island right here in front of us. And the trip is only about 45 minutes. And then we have a lot of driving in front of us. So let's go. So the kind captains here, they have allowed me to sit in here on the bridge because they have Ase. Yes. <laughs> Dari Lombok, dari Jawa, dari Jawa, yeah. dari Jawa, Jawa. Oh, ojo lali tonton video oh, saya yo. Oh, <laughs> so now, guys, I will istirahat a little bit. And we then set off from Amalengo Port on our way to Labuan Bajo Port, not the one in NTT, by the way. And just 45 minutes later, we arrived, or at least. That was the original plan. guys the reason why there's so many people waiting and so many cars waiting here now is because it is now a quarter to one the trip ended up taking yeah, more than two and a half hours we were supposed to leave at 10 o'clock but the ferry didn't depart until 11 o'clock and then once we arrived here in front of Bhutan Island then we had to wait more than an hour for the next ship to finish loading. So, wow, it is going to be a late day. The guys they did say four or five hours if I was fast, but we will see. <laughs> right now I have no signal on this island. And that's gonna be a problem if I want to use the GPS to find Bao Bao. We will see. It is nice to be back on a nice smaller island again. Palm trees, we're right next to the ocean. <laughs> Small cows walking near the tiny road, which I assume is one of the only big roads here on the island. 
but what I can see is that looks like dark rain clouds. Uh, hopefully the next four hours won't be in rain. So guys, my plan was to arrive in Baobao today before the afternoon rain. But it is not exactly going... Assalamu alaikum. It's not exactly going to my plan. Because it is pouring down rain. So, we're stuck here for a bit. And I hope that the rain will go away soon. Yeah. Welcome to Bhutan Island. Unfortunately, waiting did not seem to help. So I had to keep going. Alright guys, we are back on the road. But as you can probably tell in the video, I cannot drive very fast. It is foggy. <laughs> Nearly killed a chicken. <laughs> oh, 73 kilometers to go. It didn't take long before I had to stop again. But this time, I spent a few hours with an incredibly kind local family. If you want to see how that turned out, you can see my reel on my Instagram, the Christian Hansen. All right, guys, I think that's gonna be it for today. I should be in my hotel about 20 minutes, but once I arrive, I'm not gonna be making any more video today. But could the day have ended any better? Boy, look at this sunset. Wait for it. There we go. Wow, my God. Not bad, yeah? Good night, guys. Selamat pagi guys, it is another beautiful morning in Indonesia. I have arrived here at Baobao and I had the most beautiful morning view from my hotel room this morning as I enjoyed my morning coffee. I arrived very late last night, I was super tired so I just completely passed out. And this morning I thought, you know what, I should meet with a local who has some experience here in Baobao. So I've met with Mario, a tour guide from Bao Bao and he gave me so many good recommendations for places to visit so I told him you know what how about you just join my trips so this afternoon we're starting our first trip but right now it's around 10 o'clock the weather is perfect I haven't used a hotel pool in a very long time so I thought now I want to enjoy that so give me a few hours to recharge my batteries and then we're gonna start what I think is gonna be an amazing trip and video here from Bhutan Island let's do it I had booked a room at Hotel Zenith through Traveloka, a famous hotel here in the center of Baobao, the island's capital. Besides the big pool, it's got a cozy ambience and a big restaurant. And considering that I was now on a smaller island, I was surprised with the rooms. The room was actually cheaper on the Traveloka app than in the reception. And this way, it's also easier for me to get a refund if I suddenly need to change my travel plans. So I recommend you check out the app before your next trip. Traveloka also has the stay first and pay later option. And besides the hotels, you can also book flights, buses, trains, crews and attractions. And it's not every day you get to stay in a hotel where you can see goats casually strolling the streets from your room. So after a couple of hours of rest, Mario had a very unique tour planned for us. All right, guys, it is the afternoon and it's time to go on our first trip. Hey, bro, Hello, Mario. how are you? Yeah, nice to meet you again. Nice to meet you again. Yeah. So you have actually been a tour guide here in Baobao for six years, yeah, it's right? Yeah, about six years, yeah. Asli Sini, yeah? Asli Sini, yeah. And Sura Lanchar, Basa Inggris, yeah? 
sedikit-sedikit. Uh, ah. I'm still learning. Sudah bagus. Actually, it's, uh, my passion is exploring and meeting new people. Perfect. That's why it's, I used to work in office uh -huh. for 10 years. Uh -huh. Then I quit. Uh -huh. And now you have your own business. It sounds similar to someone else I know. Yeah. Me. Oh. <laughs> That's good. I think we're gonna have some great trips. He's picked me up in his car. So uh, we got about a one hour drive. So let's get to it. We then set course for a small village outside of Bao Bao, where I was hoping to meet a special girl named Titra. Alright guys, we have made it to this uh, Bonea Tiro. <laughs> Very small fisherman village or? Yes. <laughs> oh, we have a lot of kids who are interested in meeting the foreigner, I think. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> hello, hello, Mister. Hello, Mister. Apa kabar, Pak? Baik. Baik, baik. Sehat. Sehat. That was Titra's father, actually. There has been reporters come out here before, right? To meet with Titra. Ah, uh, it's local, I think, from Indonesia. Just local, yeah. local media, yeah. No bule. I never heard. No. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Many of the neighbors had shown up, as they are always excited when Ditra has visitors. Because a specific gene runs in Ditra's family, something that only happens in one out of 42,000 people. It was previously believed to have come from the Portuguese who married their ancestors. But today, it is also called the Wadenburg syndrome. Ditra lives here with her father, mother and sister. And she is the only one of them who has two different eye colors. Hello. <laughs> Kalau keluarganya ini kadang dua, satu, kadang sebelah, kiri, kanan. Dan gimana Titra rasanya? Keren tuh. Ya, unik, unik. Unik ya? Unik. Ya bangga lah, bangga. <laughs> Karena dikunjungi tuh jadi bangga. Ada banyak teman, mau mata biru juga? Ada ya? <laughs> Keren. Titra mau jadi apa? Kerjaan apa? Polisi ya, siap 86. <laughs> Semangat ya. Semangat. Ah, itu bagus. But Titra's friends couldn't wait much longer for us to come out. So Titra took us on a tour of her village. My name is Christian. Titra. My name is Christian. Hey guys. Oh, saya polisi ya. Jangan lupa pakai helm ya. Yeah. <laughs> Hati-hati di jalan ya. Ada banyak anak di kampung ini ya. Banyak. I then asked Titra if she wanted to try and use my GoPro. And it was just fantastic to see that she really enjoyed all the extra attention that this visit was bringing. There are so many people here and they are so happy that we are visiting today. So I'm so happy that we came here to this village. I was a little bit worried she would be shy, but she's not shy at all. She's just very happy. I had heard stories about how looking different in a village can be tough. So it warmed my heart to witness that Ditra's unique eyes was nothing short of a blessing. Okay, Tidra, terima kasih banyak ya. Sampai bertemu lagi dan 
sukses selalu semoga nanti jadi polisi oke okay. dadah Satu lagi So guys, before we leave, I had an idea Recently one of my loyal subscribers, Rob Madafari He sent a hundred Australian dollars as a super chat during my last live And I told him, Rob, there's gonna be a clip about you in my next video So here we go Guys, siapa mau ice cream? Thank you so much, Rob. You're about to make a lot of kids happy. That's a good, good end of the day. Baba Maujula? And we ended the day with a local trying to teach me a bit of Javanese. Waktu ibu mau lahir, semua bagus dan sehat dan tidak ada kendala. Amin. Terima kasih banyak ya, Pak. Dan Dita. Terima kasih banyak ya. Dita, saya punya seperti community dalam YouTube channel. Kadang-kadang mereka kasih duit ke saya. Dan waktu saya bertemu orang baik seperti hari ini, saya kasih kembali ya. Jadi terima kasih banyak ya. Wih banyak diterang. Sama-sama ya. Jadi nih berfoto di sini terang ya. Selamat pagi Mario. How are you? Good. Good. Fine. Yeah. Good. So where are we going today? We call it Benteng Kraton Wolio. Benteng Kuratan. Yeah. Mantap. It's just near the city center. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So let's take the bike, yeah? Okay. We then had a quick 10-minute ride from the hotel to the most famous attraction on Bhutan Island. Okay, we made it. And no problem for the Honda, yeah? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we have made it to Penteng Kraton, the Bhutan Sultanate Palace, yeah? Yes. Actually, I read that in 2006, Guinness World Record, they awarded it the biggest castle in the world. Yeah. Well, I can now say that I've officially visited the largest castle in the world. People here say that if you don't come to, if you come to Bhutan and you don't... Uh, visit this area, Benteng Kraton, so they said like, uh, you don't come to Bao Bao ah, yes. until you... Until you visited yes. the fort. Good thing that we come here today. Nah, so this is the wall, yeah? Yes. So this, guys, is a list of all the different sultans that once were here in Bhutan. The first ruler here in, in Bhutan was actually a queen, yeah? Yes. Wakaka. Uh, Wakaka. And the last sultan was until 1960. 60. Sultan Murhum. Yeah. He was the the last king, king and, the and the first, first sultan. sultan. Yeah. Because before there were sultans here in Bhutan, it was actually yeah. a kingdom, right? Yes. But then yeah. when the Islam came to Bhutan, to Bhutan they yeah. changed to There's sultan. A, some say that the Muslim came to Bhutan it's from Johor, Malaysia. Oh yeah. Uh, the other uh, side say they uh, came from Ternate. Okay, okay. One of the most sacred places here is the Batu Popawa. The new sultans would place his foot in the hole and take an oath to lead in good faith. And a local story tells that if he didn't act with honest intentions, 
he would be sucked into the earth. You can also visit the 483-year-old Agum Kesultanan Mosque that was originally built in 1541. Man, this is the stuff I think is really cool. Here we can see some of the old cannons. These are relics from when the Dutch and the Portuguese was here. This fortress was built in the late 1600s. Yeah, in the same century as when the Portuguese first arrived here. This place is enormous, so we drove to the other end, where it was nice to see that even though this place has many visitors, Papa helps every day to keep it clean. There is one symbol that you will see repeatedly both in the fort and in the city, and that's a pineapple. So I asked Mario what that was all about. It uh, has some meaning in for people in Baobao or Bhutan. People say like uh, Bhutanese looks like a pineapple. It's harsh outside, but uh, sweet inside. <laughs> ah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's clear to see that the people of Bhutan are very proud of their history and their heritage. We also stopped by the mayor's office, where you can see the tales of a dragon that continues down into the city center. It supposedly represents the relationship the Bhutan Sultanate had with the Chinese kingdom in the past. A quick ride through the city and you will see several statues representing the Bhutanese culture, like the last king and the first sultan. And at the ocean front, they are even building a 23 meter tall statue of the local hero, former sultan Himayatuddin. But before we started our next trip, we decided to take a quick break from the 32 degrees outside. All right, guys, Mario and I, we had a little rest and now we're going back on the road. Yeah. You're in the camera right there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 you come. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so, but now we're going to drive for about one hour to a place called Rongi. Rongi, yeah, a village that Mario thinks I should definitely visit. And now we're bringing Machan and what is the name of your bike? Didu. Didu? Yeah. Didu and Didu. <laughs> so let's go. He is such a good guy, Mario. You know, I've had a lot of tour guides over the last couple of years and there are just some that really stand out like Jet for example in Kerinci or Honchi in Mentawai and I have a good feeling that Mario is going to be one of those guys as well he's so patient he is so skilled he is coordinated he thinks ahead and yeah he's just incredibly kind as well so yeah it's going to be some good days with Mario. Alright guys, it is around 3.30 and the light is really making the view beautiful right now. It's a good thing that I brought Mario out here because I don't think I would have found this place on my own. The roads here are so small and it's in the middle of nowhere. So I think it's like 80 something percent of the entire island is, is rainforest. I mean, look at that. It's just a house in the middle of the forest. So I really look forward to seeing the view from above when we, when we arrive. All right, guys, we have made it to Rongi village. And wow, it is beautiful here. Hello, hello. Hello! <laughs> wow! So it's basically it's just like a small village but way on top of the hills. Oi! Opa! Hello! Alright, we've made it. The Bhutanese Chia Chia tribe lives right here in the Sandang Pangan village. Surrounded by rainforest, 
a small community of 200 people called Rongi lives here on a hilltop. Their language is quite famous as it's written with Korean characters. You can find these writings on some buildings around the island. Okay. Maybe they can teach me something in Bahasa Chiechi? Huh? Apa kabar Bahasa Chiechi? Apa kabar? Apa kabar? Apa kabar? Yeah. Heka baramiu. Heka baramiu. Yeah. So all the houses I can see here they're built on a foundation of big rocks. Yeah. And then the rest of it completely from wood. Because the community law says that the houses must be maintained in their original form. No one are allowed to make permanent buildings in cement or concrete. They meet their daily needs by working in agriculture on their two hectares of land. And at the moment it's peanut season, so everywhere the women are sitting and opening peanut shells. They can sell these later for 50,000 rupiah or roughly three dollars per kilo. <laughs> this is actually a little bit more difficult than I had expected and quite a time-consuming process. Satu. Ambil satu, satu ribu? Yeah. Wow. The chase is really good. But this traditional way of life might not be suitable in the future for the younger generations. Iya, saya lahir di sini. Keluarga orang tua, terutama orang tua kerjanya petani. Kayaknya kalau masalah perekonomian kayaknya harus di kota besar. Maksudnya saya eh perputaran uangnya kan tidak bisa kita, tidak ada mata pencaharian. Kalau seperti umur-umurnya kita ini boleh di kota. Toh Karena tidak bisa mi lagi kita mau kayak men kayak katon jadi petani begitu tidak bisa lagi tidak sanggup kayak umur umurnya kita ini akhirnya kita merantau. This small village here in Anongi is so beautiful. So if you come here, <laughs> so if you come here to Bhutan, I'd really recommend you stop by here if you want to see how the yeah village life looks like. The locals hadn't seen a drone before, so they are very excited to see the view from above. I also showed them how it can be used as a fan. <laughs> Alright guys, it has been a great little stay here in Rongyi. Uh, and uh, the people have been so kind to us. Now we're gonna go up to the top of the hill and enjoy the sunset. Okay guys, terima kasih! Iya, terima kasih banyak ya. Jangan lupa nonton di YouTube. Ya, oke, oke, gas. Oke, let's go. Ah, they were so kind. Oh my god. What a great village visit. And look at the hills here as the sun is setting. Bukit Lamando. Fantastic. Well, not a bad place to end the day, yeah? <laughs> Good day.
we then enjoyed the view as the sun beautifully set over the hilltops. After some incredible days of exploring. But stay tuned, because the Bhutan adventure with Mario isn't over just yet. Because it's jungle time. This is so cool in so many ways. Fire ants everywhere. Oh my god, how are we gonna get down?